Hey, good morning, y'all. Uh, Josh of Severe Weather. I hope you are all being safe in this nasty winter storm down south. I'm going to spend quite a bit of time unpacking the weather today, tonight, first thing tomorrow. We're not going to look much at the long range with so much going on in the short term. Uh, but uh, if you could uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel as I'll give you daily videos uh, every day except Sunday, typically, unless extremely major weather is impacting us. And uh, we'll break down kind of more of the details. I know a lot of you have chimed in from different parts of the country, and I, I'm going to do my best not to leave you out. But please understand that today the weather is uh, certainly dangerous for a lot of places that I'm going to focus most of my energy on speaking about. So let me share my screen with you all here and talk to you about what we're looking at. A lot of states are under some form of winter weather advisory warning. Um, the darker purple magenta, magenta colors here from the National Weather Service are under an ice storm warning. This includes the majority of West Central Texas all the way down into southwestern parts of uh, Texas and also uh, southeastern Oklahoma, southern and central Arkansas, northwestern Mississippi, far southern Missouri, the, the far southern boot heel, and western Tennessee. Surrounding that we have winter weather advisories extending from south central Texas right through far northeast Texas and the Arklatex, northern Louisiana including Monroe and Shreveport, <clears throat> west central to northeastern Mississippi, northwest Alabama, middle Tennessee all the way to the Cumberland Plateau, uh, south central and southeastern Kentucky including Hazard County, uh, southern and central West Virginia and uh, the far western part of Virginia um, basically along the Blue Ridge here. And uh, also across central Oklahoma, including Oklahoma City, Tulsa, uh, down to Altus and Lawton, uh, Lubbock, Texas, just south of Amarillo, southeastern New Mexico, and all the way to almost El Paso. Uh, and then in the pink, we have a winter storm warning for a mix of different types of ice and maybe even a little bit of snow. And that expands all the way south to San Antonio, west to near Del Rio, uh, right on northeast, right through the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex, McKinney and Denton, uh, all the way into southeastern parts of Oklahoma, south central Oklahoma, southwestern Arkansas as well. And on top of that, we have numerous river flood warnings. Those are the brighter greens all the way into South Carolina. Uh, flash flood watch across the Piney Woods region of east Texas and west central Louisiana. And uh, dense fog advisories for far southeast Louisiana, southern Alabama, much of the Florida Panhandle, northern Florida Peninsula, southern Georgia, and southern South Carolina, especially the low country here where we've continued to have fog over the last few mornings. And uh, it, it's, it's a lot to talk about, no question about it. And I don't want to leave you guys off the map, but the Mid-Atlantic region is seeing in some places its first snowfall of the winter, uh, February 1st here. Uh, parts of Virginia, Maryland, Delaware, South Jersey, New York City area, and south of Philadelphia as well, seeing some light amounts of snow falling this morning. So an awful lot here. The areas that are going to be most impacted by winter weather are in the yellows and the oranges, and that is the majority of central and north Texas here, except for the far northern panhandle, much of Oklahoma as well, especially south and east of Oklahoma City over to the Wachita Mountains. Uh, parts of central Arkansas, especially just south of Little Rock, it looks like here, and again, those higher elevations, uh, have a moderate impact of significant amounts of uh, wintry precipitation, expecting very dangerous driving weather, closures, and disruptions. And uh, minor impacts, I mean, honestly, minor impacts, according to the Weather Prediction Center, to me, these are major because anybody in the south knows any form of frozen precipitation is going to have a major impact on your life. Uh, so I I'm not throwing these folks under the bus. Trust me, I'm not. They've got the areas pinned down. They've done a great job on that. Um, if anything, the, the colder air has made it a little farther south and east as the models have struggled with the depth of this shallow cold air mass. And a few days ago, it didn't look like it was going to get down the College Station. And now we've got Bryan College Station getting potentially impacted, maybe all the way close to Huntsville, Lufkin. Uh, what was the town I was looking at before? Uh, not Rusk. Uh, Henderson, Henderson, Texas, I guess that's Russ County, up to Longview, Shreveport, Monroe, Bastrop, um, Ruston, Grambling, and uh, even winter weather impacts could be felt as far south and east as just uh, Tupelo and Oxford, Mississippi, maybe close to Starkville, Columbus Air Force Base, not quite to Huntsville, but certainly Florence and Muscle Shoals, maybe Decatur, and now the Nashville, Middle Tennessee area does have some winter storm impacts. Uh, I'm surprised this isn't in the light gray, but uh, nonetheless, enough of an impact to cause uh, some locally slick spots, especially on your on your elevated roads, your bridges, your uh, areas that do not um, get the pavement warming <clears throat> and minor snowfall impacts 
uh, here in central and northern Virginia into much of the Delmarva, uh, Jersey, much of New Jersey, much of Pennsylvania, with a few exceptions, uh, and southern New England as well. And we're going to have more cold to talk about here. I'm not really going to focus on that this video. You can go back and look at the last couple of videos. Not a lot has changed. So current radar now from uh, perryweather.com. Let me uh, show you the full screen of that here. And we'll zoom in here. It'll, of course, focus on my spot here in Raleigh. Yeah, it's raining here. It, it, temperature dropped 10 degrees this morning from midnight to about now. We had pea soup fog. Now it's just a chillier rain. Kind of a backdoor front has dropped down to near Charlotte right now. And we see an area of moderate rainfall spreading across central and eastern North Carolina, southeastern Virginia, the southern Delmarva, and some light snow. This has produced some minor accumulations, mainly outside the big cities. New York City and Philly, from what I can tell, still have not picked up any accumulating snow. Uh, it's sticking to the grass, maybe, but not enough to cover the roadways. So the snow drought likely continues. The record snow drought here for Central Park, New York City. Philadelphia also in the snow drought. Baltimore and D.C. may get a very small accumulation, but here, as of this video, at 6.30 in the morning, it's already starting to lift away from you. And uh, at Dulles Airport, the National Weather Service in Sterling did pick up their first accumulating snow, albeit it was a very piddly amount of 0.4 inches on the grass. Um, zooming back to the west here, uh, and of course, I uh, don't want to leave y'all out in New England. We did have some light snow earlier, but that is now shifting away from much of New England, just affecting the south coast at this point. Really, our focus today turns to, once again, Texas and Oklahoma and Arkansas, where we do have uh, mixed wintry precipitation from San Antonio to Tyler on north and west. And this area right here is actually going to be blossoming around Odessa and Midland, spreading northeast through Midland and right on through the southern half of Oklahoma and much of the state of Arkansas today, and uh, likely to be primarily freezing rain with some sleet, depending on where the uh, layer goes above freezing aloft. Um, the lower it is, the more likely it's freezing rain. The higher up it is, the more likely it's sleet. Um, basically, sleet means there's more time for refreezing as that air that has gone above freezing refreezes as, the, uh, as that colder layer shifts in underneath. So you have a cold layer that drops down underneath a warm layer, and that allows the air, uh, whatever's falling, to become rain and then refreeze when it comes down. With freezing rain, that layer is so shallow, it doesn't get a chance to refreeze into sleet or snow. Uh, well, really sleet, it won't get to snow at that point because it'll be above freezing up in the air. Uh, however, um, freezing rain, of course, is going to be the biggest problem, and that's going to encompass many states here today and tonight and even into tomorrow. Um, we will also see with this area here in West Texas expanding northeast today, some heavier rain rates across central and east Texas and into Louisiana, Mississippi, as we get later into today and tomorrow. And I'll talk about some thunderstorm chances as well. This is a very unstable air mass. We saw thunder sleet in Dallas yesterday, uh, as well as thunder sleet and thunder uh, freezing rain around Little Rock and on north. And the day before across Oklahoma, uh, between Oklahoma City and Tulsa, a lot of lightning strikes as well with temperatures in the teens and low 20s. So uh, it may be very cold near the surface when you get several thousand feet up there is a quick drop off in temperature and more instability as air can rise more quickly so a pretty amazing system that we're looking at here uh, so anyway um, great radar here i can kind of zoom in and show you all some more um, radar scope pro as well we can look at this morning and these are precipitation types the radar struggles with the type but uh, we are seeing light to moderate freezing rain falling across much of this area here from san antonio through uh, Temple and Waco on up to just west of Tyler. Uh, no snow in here, despite what the radar is showing. It's just struggling with precip types. Uh, when we get north and west of Dallas, we have light to moderate freezing rain and drizzle falling across much of northern Texas, the big sky country here. Um, really right on down into the heart of Texas. If I show you all the uh, radar here from uh, San Angelo, you can see that this is all freezing rain falling uh, up through Odessa, big, big spring even southeastern New Mexico, including Hobbs, maybe close to Roswell and up to Lubbock, Texas. So uh, the freezing line is kind of right about here at this point. Um, you can see right on through San Antonio and then right up in this direction. Uh, and it's still very cold all the way down in deep south Texas. We have upper 30s here where a couple days ago it was in the 70s. So the Arctic air is still making its way south and eastward. Uh, but the fact that we've got this upper level disturbance kind of digging through in this area, kind of have an upper level low, and this trough in here, that is bringing enough milder air up and over to kind of prevent temperatures from tumbling much more in deep south Texas. It's very rare you get a freeze all the way down 
uh, to the Rio Grande and Brownsville, Westlaco, uh, Har um, Harlingen, those areas. Uh, but we've got strong flow out of the southwest. That is bringing this moisture in around this trough. And as the low pressure itself tracks northeastward here tonight and tomorrow, um, we will see some cooling aloft, which could bring this back into some snow on the backside of this storm on top of the ice. And even though snow amounts may be on the light side, um, when you've got all the ice underneath it, it's going to take a while to get that snow to melt away because you've got that sheet of ice underneath of it. If you've ever tried to shovel um, snow that has ice mixed in with it, it's a lot harder than your fluffier snows. Uh, so that's something if you want to keep in mind here, travel is going to be a problem for quite some time here in Texas. It may be until Thursday night and Friday before we can really see enough improvement. Um, moving up into Oklahoma, you can see that right now the precipitation is pretty light on the I-44 corridor. It's mainly confined to the Red River region um, with uh, some Durant seeing and just south of Ardmore seeing some freezing rain right now. That is going to shift northeastward towards McAllister, uh, Poto. Uh, and Fort Smith, Arkansas, so the Ouachita Mountains that are right in here are going to see some significant icing again here as the day wears on. Farther east into Little Rock, um, we are seeing um, a light wintry mix. Um, most of that heavy freezing rain that hit you yesterday has shifted south and east of you in Little Rock, but the next wave is uh, spreading in from the Arklatex region this morning, and things will start getting bad again here along I-40, which is this road right here. Um, tracking into northwestern Mississippi and Tennessee. We're even seeing freezing rain in Batesville and Oxford, Mississippi, Clarksdale, and maybe even as far south as Indianola and Cleveland. This is typically Tornado Alley, and now we're dealing with an ice storm, it looks like, all the way down into here. And then as we move into Tennessee, I did want to show you all the radar. And you can see uh, Nashville is uh, dealing with a, a bit of a dry uh, a bit of a dry tongue right now before the next wave moves in. Most of the freezing rain is well south. Uh, impacting places like Manchester, McMinnville, all the way down to close to Athens in Muscle Shoals, Alabama, and primarily rain in East Tennessee. The cold air hasn't just quite made it there yet. I uh, did want to take you all up into Missouri still and Western Kentucky. I didn't want to ignore you here in the Quad State region. Right now, things are okay. It's dry, but it is cold. Temperatures in the upper teens, low 20s. Um, we will see this next wave that's going to be back in Oklahoma and Texas moving northeast later today and tonight and this region in here again has the uh, has the likelihood of seeing frozen precipitation and this time i don't think it's light snow i think it's primarily sleet uh, with some freezing rain mixed in um, so let's look real quick here at the northeast or i should say the mid-atlantic region not quite the northeast this is the uh, radar out of sterling and we can see some light snow falling as far back as prince william county uh, still rain in richmond still rain in ashland county and hanover counties um, a light wintry mix, though, starting to go over to some wet snow near Harrisonburg, and that will shift southeastward towards Charlottesville this morning, uh, all the way into like Spotsylvania, Fredericksburg, Stafford County this morning. Uh, not going to stick really to much, though. Amounts should be pretty light. I am keeping an eye, though, here on the eastern shore of Maryland and southern Delaware, where I do think this band over here this morning could drop a quick half inch to inch. And its uh, roads are still kind of warm, so it's primarily going to be on your secondary roads, your bridges, your grassy areas, uh, not the main thoroughfares. But do be prepared for just some slightly slower travel this morning. Uh, when you get farther north into Jersey, most of that snow is pretty much done, except right near the Jer Jersey Shore. Uh, New York City is starting to see just a few leftover snowflakes. Most of this is going to be done here. Southern Long Island down into South Jersey and the Philly Metro, mainly the Jersey side here, still seeing some snow this morning over the next couple of hours. Uh, amounts could make it up to an inch, mainly on the grass. Not going to be really a big deal, but we haven't really seen any snow this winter, so we'll take what we can get here. Um, Groundhog's Day Eve, and we're seeing light snow falling in Wildwood, Atlantic City, right up to Tom's River, and uh, all the way up to, um, what is the uh, town, not Tom's River, north of Tom's River, um, Neptune and, and Long Beach, those areas, so right up here to, uh, to uh, the central coast of Jersey. And finally, in New England, um, we are seeing some light snow still falling, mainly south of Boston. So the South Shore seeing some light snow. It's a little bit enhanced here around Skituate and down to Plymouth um, on the south coast here. And it looks like Cape Cod seeing some better rates. So the islands are actually gonna get more snow out of this than the Boston area as we wear on through this morning. So anyway, um, that was the uh, radar. Let's look at the forecast here. First of all, I did wanna show you um, the European lightning flash density map, and we see 
um, there could there's there's a lot lower chance that we see some lightning here today versus the last couple of days. Uh, but there will be some lightning. Let me um, get you all the latest here. Okay, that is the latest. Um, we will see some lightning from the upper low down in Mexico and southern Arizona as the day wears on. But Texas, a lot less likely to see lightning today than yesterday. There still could be a few isolated strokes in this region. Same goes for southern Oklahoma. But most of our lightning is going to be near the Gulf Coast. And there could be some heavier storms tomorrow. Uh, around the Atchafalaya Bay, the south coast of Louisiana, spreading eastward into the Baton Rouge area, Hammond, uh, getting towards Covington and Mandeville tomorrow afternoon and evening, and then things kind of wear uh, wear out as we get through the lightning. Precipitation type on the NAM, uh, you all can see that we've got yet another push of moisture coming in from our upper low here, so freezing rain rates start picking back up today. Uh, also sleet along I-20 through about late morning and then a shift to freezing rain this afternoon. And rates will be heavier when we get into this evening around the Dallas-Fort Worth area and up into southern Oklahoma. So much of the day today in Oklahoma is not going to be terribly bad. It'll still be icy from what we've had. Temperatures are not going to make it above freezing. But as we get into tonight, southern Oklahoma, especially southeastern Oklahoma, except right here near the Arkansas border, we'll see some heavier amounts of freezing rain. This is midnight to, uh, tonight, and uh, we continue to see freezing rain into tomorrow morning. Temperatures are starting to bounce back a little bit past freezing. Now, as the upper level low shifts um, from the southwest into the Texas Panhandle and west, southwest Oklahoma, uh, it cools aloft so that freezing rain layer is actually going to shift over to snow. Uh, the NAM model is a little bit weird here with the rain. I think it's not not going to be warm enough for anything but snow at this point, maybe a little bit of sleet mixed in. Uh, but we see heavy rain across East Texas tomorrow morning, shifting east into Louisiana and Mississippi, and maybe some snow here on the backside with freezing rain continuing most of the day tomorrow across central and eastern Oklahoma. It's going to be lighter at that point, but enough to cause problems for you here. Um, we'll take a look here at temperatures. This is the current temperature uh, map here across Texas, Oklahoma, and Western Arkansas. You can see the freezing line right here, all the way down to College Station, San Antonio, and just north of Del Rio. And we're well into the low to mid 20s here in West Central Texas, low 20s in the ta Texas Panhandle, and teens basically north of 44. Uh, so mid to upper teens in Oklahoma, where things have dried out, upper teens in Northwest Arkansas. 20s in southern Oklahoma and central Arkansas and sneaking just past freezing in Texarkana. Uh, so this cold air continues to outperform the models, and that's why we've seen these watches and warnings expand. Now the NAM model today, um, I will show you all, temperatures do slowly warm, but it's not by a lot. We'll be in the potentially the upper 20s to maybe low 30s, and that's it across central Oklahoma. Uh, we're still below freezing in many spots here. Texas is going to stay entrenched in the 20s west of Dallas-Fort Worth, west of Grand Prairie, uh, and especially um, when you get over into the big sky country here of Texas. Uh, so 20s and staying there through this evening and maybe slowly warming a bit tonight, but still below freezing uh, all the way to San Antonio and the 35 corridor. And um, even though it's nighttime, temperatures have moderated a little bit according to this model, but then they drop again tomorrow morning. Uh, as you can see, we are still struggling to get past freezing in these areas during the morning tomorrow. It may take us until um, really tomorrow evening and tomorrow night before temperatures recover in West Texas. In Oklahoma, um, we see on the NAM still temperatures hovering right at the freezing mark across much of central Oklahoma, even uh, north central Texas here, uh, all the way close to Childress and Wichita Falls. are not going to be much past freezing, so don't expect to see a whole lot of melting out of this um, with whatever is falling tomorrow. It's really going to take until about Friday morning. Um, and you can see this is very early Friday, about 4 a.m. And then as we get through the day, temperatures even just really struggle to get up past freezing before late morning on Friday. Uh, so the cold stretch continues in Texas and Oklahoma during the day on Friday. We'll look at the precipitation here from the HRRR model. You guys can see heavier bands of freezing rain expected uh, this morning in southwestern parts of Texas and then expanding northeast towards Dallas-Fort Worth, uh, Austin, Texas, right on through this afternoon. And tonight, we continue to have freezing rain and it expands northward through southern Oklahoma, and, um, and then a change over to maybe some sleet and eventually snow here tomorrow morning across parts of west central Texas. We could see a little accumulation out of this 
Um, and as it sweeps east towards Dallas, it should change over primarily to rain. Uh, the NAM also shows that. Um, there are some subtle differences in where the freezing line ends up tomorrow morning around 7 a.m., but still likely going to have ice all over the place. Even if temperatures are 32, 33, it's not like it's just going to instantly be gone. It'll take a while to thaw. And we do see that snow area here along the Red River tomorrow afternoon, expanding close to north and west of Dallas. So maybe up to Denton and possibly McKinney here at the end of the day tomorrow before a change over to some light rain. Um, these are precipitation amounts from the HRRR, and you see the heavy rain over East Texas and Southwestern Texas. You see heavy freezing rain here across, I mean, 65% of the state of Texas has ice on the ground, uh, which is just incredible. Some sleet in there as well. You can see the orange colors are sleet. And we see some snow accumulating here in the uh, west central parts of Texas, uh, cattle country, oil country here um, during the day tomorrow on the backside of the storm before things finally move out. Um, freezing rain totals. I don't know what happened here. Oh, I know what happened. Weatherbell.com loaded new model information, but you all can see a quarter to a half inch of ice widespread here, uh, right on through tomorrow. Um, even all the way into southern Oklahoma, we could see a couple more tents of ice. Heavier amounts look to be right across the middle part of Texas, so the heart of Texas up to uh, big sky country. Uh, we could see ice amounts over a half inch, maybe three quarters to even close to a full inch of ice. Um, as we look at sleet amounts, uh, we see that those are smaller, but it's been a lot of sleet so far in Dallas. Now we're looking at freezing rain, still a potential for close to an inch of sleet uh, south of San Angelo across um, not the hill country, but in between I-20 and the hill country um, in some of the more rural spots here and possibly some more sleet as well expanding into northeast Texas. Uh, for you in Oklahoma, not going to see nearly as much sleet out of this, um, primarily freezing rain. And then snow, we haven't seen much of that yet, but we will see some overnight uh, around Lubbock and southeastern New Mexico, and then expanding during the morning tomorrow towards San Angelo, and then sneaking into Abilene at the end of the day tomorrow, maybe a few inches could accumulate on top of the ice. And then as we get to tomorrow evening, the amounts start lessening when we get closer to Fort Worth, Texas. So not a lot of snow farther east, um, but you know, west central Texas could see a few inches of accumulation. All right, so we're going to look farther east and northeast and look at this morning. We see this area of light snow uh, showing up on the NAM model. Not going to be much accumulation, but probably peaking around 7 a.m. as everybody's starting to try to get to work here in eastern and southern Maryland, uh, as well as Delaware and South Jersey. Uh, and we see rain continuing this morning across um, parts of southern Virginia and eastern parts of North Carolina. And that will move out. We should we should dry out, but it's going to stay overcast here across uh, the majority of the Carolinas as this colder air presses slowly southward into South Carolina. Our next wave then expands into Arkansas here tonight with freezing rain overspreading central and northeast Arkansas through tomorrow morning. Memphis, northwestern parts of uh, Mississippi, on eastward do see freezing rain it's going to be close in nashville and then we do see an area of light snow breaking out in the central appalachians eastern kentucky down the northeast tennessee northwestern north carolina and uh, doesn't look like it's really going to make it east of the mountains tomorrow afternoon but we could see a few sleet pellets mixed in here with the next wave of light rain moving into the carolinas here during the day tomorrow but the bigger story is going to be the heavy rain from east texas tomorrow moving into parts of the deep south here uh, right on into Georgia tomorrow afternoon and especially tomorrow night. There could be a few embedded thunderstorms, but mainly a soaking cold rain. And then on the backside, we could see some snowflakes Friday morning across northern Mississippi and Alabama. Not going to really stick much. Uh, but when you get farther east, we see a very thin layer of maybe some wet snow falling near and south of Raleigh, North Carolina Friday morning. Uh, this would include uh, Wilson, Fayetteville, Clinton. Um, getting over close to Wadesboro and then farther east, maybe getting all the way close to the Outer Banks and then shifting southward. And interestingly, the NAM model shows what could be some accumulating snow as temperatures do drop um, from the ground down uh, as we get into Friday morning across uh, a good chunk of eastern and southern parts of North Carolina, maybe even far northeastern um, South Carolina when you get north of Florence here. But again, this is just the NAM model that doesn't agree with all the other models. Precipitation totals are going to be pretty high here um, as we get into tomorrow in East Texas, the Arklatex, Southern Arkansas, Northeast Louisiana, Western and Western and Central parts of Mississippi, an inch, two inches of rain likely, Northern and Central Alabama, then Georgia, 
And then you can see that area of heavy rain does drop southeastward on Friday, and we will see a pretty good soaking here across the Carolinas as well on Friday, even with some wet snow mixed in. Uh, the HER model, um, I'll show you the shorter term. You can see most of our moisture moves away here this morning from the mid-Atlantic region, and by the afternoon, we're dry. Here's the next wave in Texas expanding northeastward. This is about four or five o'clock this afternoon, getting nasty again tonight across Arkansas, Tennessee, maybe far southern parts of the boot heel of Missouri and far southwest Kentucky could see a little bit of this as well. And then an area of light snow expanding from the Cumberland Plateau on into southwest Virginia tomorrow morning uh, with some light snow, maybe falling close to Richmond or just south of Richmond, maybe like Dinwiddie and South Hill. Uh, during the morning tomorrow, but mostly this is going to be rain and not a lot sticks. Uh, heavy rainfall across the southeast right on through tomorrow and tomorrow night, and you'll notice the herd does not shift this over to snow uh, yet um, through tomorrow night. Maybe that's possible as we get to Friday morning. We'll see some lightning here uh, on the Gulf Coast. I talked about that, and then tomorrow night and especially Friday in the Florida Panhandle, southeastern Georgia, and then northeast Florida Friday morning, a chance for some lightning. And then thunderstorms drop south and we'll see lightning on the I-4 corridor Friday afternoon across uh, central Florida and maybe Friday evening over southeast Florida. But not uh, when you get farther south and east, we start losing some of the dynamics to produce these heavier rain rates. So just a few isolated thunderstorms. Here are current temperatures in the deep south, uh, well below freezing all the way down to I-20 and then up through northern Mississippi. Uh, Nashville is below freezing, 30 degrees. It is still above freezing, though, around Chattanooga, so I think we'll stay there. Uh, the Enam model shows, as we get through today, that it is obviously going to stay pretty cold today, and temperatures start to recover a little bit since it won't be precipitating this afternoon. So we should be above freezing in northern Alabama and Mississippi, but tonight you see temperatures slowly dip back down here before recovering tomorrow. So it's gonna be kind of a marginal event down in the Nashville area and on southward, uh, but certainly uh, if, if these numbers end up a little bit colder, we could have more issues coming from that. And then you'll see this cold air finally moves through Southeast Louisiana tomorrow night. Baton Rouge goes from 66 at sunset uh, to 43 degrees at right before midnight and then down to about 40. And uh, New Orleans cools off here as well tomorrow night and we'll see the rest of the Gulf Coast turning colder on Friday morning. Um, we'll take a close look here at precipitation types from the HRRR, storm one moves away, storm two moves in this afternoon, here's tonight, and we see everything overspreading Tennessee, Northwest Mississippi and Arkansas, heavy rain though, as temperatures slowly recover tomorrow, and thunderstorms likely down here could produce some heavy rain, maybe some isolated severe weather as well, locally strong winds and hail uh, across Louisiana, Mississippi and Alabama, and then moving into Northwestern Florida, we will dry out, though, here um, north of I-20 as we get into the day on Friday morning. And now, finally, we'll look over here into the mid-Atlantic region. Current temperatures are dropping quickly. You can see our boundary from near about Hickory and um, Hickory and Wilkesboro on down through just south of Fayetteville and down to about Moorhead City. Still mild and foggy here this morning in the Carolinas, uh, but it has definitely dropped off. I'm here in South Raleigh. We were 57 with pea soup fog at midnight. Now it's about 44 degrees and will likely still drop this morning. Going to be another warm day, though, across the rest of the southeast. As you can see, here's kind of our backdoor front. And um, we're, in the, we're in the 60s in Florence um, this morning. And then we end the day in the upper 40s and low 50s. And you can see this front dropping down through the Lake Marion region, Lake Murray region here, uh, with 50s east of the boundary and 70s west of it. So this is a backdoor front moving in from northeast to southwest with the shallow cold air mass. This is four o'clock, three o'clock this afternoon, four, five o'clock, six o'clock, and it looks like seven, eight o'clock, it moves through Charleston and then through Beaufort and Hilton Head early this evening and then spreading down through Savannah tonight. And tomorrow it encounters resistance and our front is stacked across Southern Georgia, but definitely a cold day tomorrow in the Carolinas. We may struggle to get out of the thirties in most of North Carolina, low forties in Charlotte and over to the Foothills region in Asheville. And as we get into tomorrow night, it turns colder and uh, you'll see that much chillier air moves in on Friday and we may not get out of the 30s across much of this area on Friday. So definitely colder weather coming after a mild start here in North Carolina and Southern Virginia and Eastern and Northern parts of South Carolina. This will be pretty bitter with that rain falling on Friday. And you can see the area where it may be snowing here could not, maybe about 33, 34 degrees lunchtime on Friday. 
HRRR model doesn't go out quite that far, but you all can see um, another wave of rain moves in tonight to the Carolinas, maybe some light snow falling here across southern Virginia. Uh, I'll show you all. Um, potential snow totals are going to be, uh, let me go back here to 6E, see, whoops, today's 6E. And you can see here, um, the model is trying to spit out a little bit of snow here uh, overnight tonight, first thing tomorrow, um, you know, places like Longwood and back to Roanoke and into the northwestern mountains of North Carolina and East Tennessee. It's not going to be much under an inch, generally speaking, except on the higher elevations. And finally, the mid-Atlantic region, uh, temperatures are slowly dropping into the 20s in New York and Philly, low 30s around D.C. and Baltimore, mid 30s in Richmond uh, and teens across the northern tier of the northeast. Uh, the models are continuing to show this chilly air uh, throughout the day today, but we should bounce back above freezing in the big cities today. Uh, tomorrow will be a little bit chillier in the morning, but moderating during the day. And then our big cold front comes down here Friday morning. You can see the front dropping southeastward and a much colder day on Friday. And Friday night will be when the cold peaks here in the northeast. Uh, we'll take a look at the radar. Um, we see everything moving out here. Let me get back to the 60 on the HER. And um, I'm going to try to wrap this up here pretty quickly. Uh, mostly a dry day here in the mid-Atlantic region. Tomorrow we see uh, light snow may sneak in or a little bit of sleet here across south central and southeastern Virginia, not all the way over though to Newport News, Hampton, or Virginia Beach. And then that moves away here and we see our Arctic boundary and maybe a snow squall here dropping southward through central New York, the Finger Lakes region, late tomorrow evening and tomorrow night and then sneaking into northern Pennsylvania here around midnight, we could see a bit of a snow squall with this Arctic boundary that's gonna bring a lot colder air in here on Friday. So that is a lot. Um, I wish I could tell you all more, but we're gonna break down more details tomorrow on what to expect in the Southeast and hopefully wrapping things up in Texas and Oklahoma tomorrow, Arkansas, Missouri as well. Uh, and then we'll start to take a little bit of a look at Friday and um, what will happen in the Northeast as well tomorrow. So thank you all for your time. Uh, I, uh, I really would appreciate your support if you could subscribe to this channel. Um, I will do my best to give you the latest and greatest. And um, I also I'm trying to stop my share here. Um, it probably has stopped, uh, but did want to just uh, thank the Lord for giving me the opportunity to share with you guys. I want to say a quick prayer rather than reading a verse i'm going to say a quick prayer in the midst of winter lord in the midst of winter when the days are cold and the wind can pierce remind us of the warmth of your love in the midst of winter when days are short dusk arrives early remind us that in the darkness your light still shines in the midst of winter when the flowers of spring still lie hidden in the earth that's of course not this spring it's already blooming here in the, in the southeast when leaves are off the trees and the world can seem bleak, remind us that Easter is but a short time away. And when in our lives we feel as if we are experiencing a season of winter, reach out to us, Lord, with the power of your resurrection so that we may feel the warmth of your love and see your light that alone can take away the darkness of our soul. And Jesus Christ, it's in his name that we pray, amen. And that is a prayer from Cal Wick. So thank you all so much. If you have any prayer requests, I'm happy to pray for you. I have others that will be happy to pray for you as well. And um, I really appreciate y'all's time this morning. Please be safe and please stay warm. And we'll talk again tomorrow. God bless you.